Hey there, folks. This is Russ Colchimero. Some of you know me from my podcast, Russ's Rock and Roller Coaster. I am also a science fiction, fantasy, and mystery author. And I am proud to announce, excited, that my new book, finally, Crackle and Fire, is available from Crazy 8 Press, as you can see behind me. Uh, the genre is sci-fi noir. Think of this as a mixture of Doctor Who, Blade Runner, and Philip Marlowe, featuring my hard-boiled private eye, Angela Hardwick. I'm going to read from chapter one as a setup. Um, I'm not going to give you too much of a lead in because I think the description will take care of itself, but we're sort of in this um, cosmic realm um, where she lives, but um, a lot of the action really takes place at street level. So here we go. Uh, part one, uh, Red Moon Rising, chapter one. Friday night cases are the worst especially in E-Town. They never start well, go well, or end well. But I took the meeting anyway. Why? Because withdrawal is a bitch. And withdrawing from drops is a bitch with spiked heels and axe to grind and a fully loaded K-71 plasma shell shotgun, double barrel. Work is the best way to keep me occupied, to let the urges pass. Only, when you're a private eye like me, taking cases in E-Town, the core city in eternity, the cosmic realm responsible for the design, creation, and maintenance of the universe, you never know where the investigation will take you, on realm or off. Miss Hardwick, Gil Habersaw starts, barely above a whisper. You're good at finding people, right? Skittish, he looks side to side and leans lower and across the table, hunching his shoulders. And being discreet? You mean like handing me a stack of cash literally under the table? He retracts the envelope he didn't think I knew about and slips it back into his breast pocket. His sad puppy dog eyes give away more than he realizes. Yeah, okay, he says, as rock music thr thrums over the constant chatter. The pub is busy, a candle on each table. I just, you know, I can't take any chances. I knock back the rest of my scotch. I'm jonesing for another. The fog was so thick when I walked over here I could barely see a foot in front of me. When did he go missing? About a week ago, maybe longer, he says, clearly out of his element, uh, acting the way he thinks this is supposed to go down. But I can't bring just anyone into this. I need to know. You came to me, Mr. Haversaw. Gil, he says, cutting me off. Call me Gil. He breathes deep, exhales, then fumbles his beard. Oh, sorry, sorry. He wipes off the table with the side of his hand, shakes it out. I'm a little nervous. I don't know how to do this. Easy, Gil. One step at a time. Tell me about your guy. What's his name? Arthur. Handsome. I gesture to the waitress to bring me another drink. And you work where? Accounting? Y yes, yeah. Breslin, Anders, and Lee. We rep luxury airship companies and other hospitality corporations. We nearly tripled in size since Astropalooza. Astropalooza, I think to myself. A celebration of the universe. Comets ripping across the sky. Constellations changing shape, pulsing nebulas, wormholes, hot air balloons, galaxy cruisers, drinks, music, a party across the realm. Nobody can keep their accounts straight, he said. I've been there about two years. They just put me in charge of the interns. Everything was fine, business as usual. Well, usual for E-Town. And then we got this new guy. Hanson, I say. Right. Hanson, he says. He's older for an intern, but it happens all the time. People change careers. It's mostly clerical work to start. He'd only been there a, a month or so when we had an internal issue, all hands on deck. What issue? Gil hesitates before answering. He's young, late 20s with gray slacks, blue blazer, and a white pocket square he's hoping looks more dapper than it does. He's only average height, maybe five foot eight or so, but he's thick with arching shoulders and stubby hands. And despite having an outsized oval head, he squints a lot, afraid to look right at me. A major account went sideways. Everyone had to work on it, but it was too high level for the interns, so I gave them busy work. We have this new file sharing system. I had them input data, figured it would keep them out of trouble, but days turned into weeks. We were all working around the clock. By the time I checked back, Hanson was gone and some of the files he worked on. And I'm assuming the files were valuable, sensitive. You have no idea. I'd have a better idea if you told me. I can't. Client, co client confidentiality, you know how it goes. Everybody's got secrets, I say. So you want me to do what exactly? Find him, he threatens, revealing his inner bulldog. You went there fast. Sorry, he says, I just, I need you to find him. I already used my super duper private eye powers to, to deduce that part, but say I find him, then what? 
Gil's eyes get shifty again. He's trying to hide just how anxious he is. It isn't working. He downloaded some client files onto a star drive. I need to know what he's seen of those files and I need the files back, including any copies he might have made. The originals are gone. Let me guess, I say. You guys handle some accounts that are not quite on the up and up? His lip quivers. The waitress hands us another round of drinks, then takes the order at the sixth top across the aisle. The savory tang of hot wing sauce finds its way over here, making my eyes water. Damn, they smell good. If my boss finds out, he says, I'm done. My life, my career, gone. I need to calm him down. So I sip my drink, slowly. What else can you tell me about this guy? Is he married, single, hobbies, things like that? No, sorry, it's been a zoo at the office. I hardly know what day it is. You said he's older. What's his background? He must have filled out an application of some kind. Should have some details on it, work history, place of residence. Yeah, all right, I'll check. I'll get you what I can. What about the other interns? I say, they might, nice, they might know something. No, I mean, he takes a deep breath, quieting himself. I don't want to raise suspicion. He's already missing, Gil. Isn't that suspicious? Interns quit all the time, he says. You know how it goes. I do, actually, I, I think, but I need more to go on. Where do the interns hang out, I ask. Maybe I could pop in. Don't worry, I say, anticipating his pushback. I'll be discreet. Uh, he says, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll try to find out. There's so much Gil's not telling me, I barely know where to start. Either he doesn't want me to know the whole story, or he doesn't know it himself. You work enough cases that take you halfway across the universe and back. You learn half the battle is extracting the real reason your clients want to hire you in the first place. They rarely want resolution. They want validation, even if it's the last thing they need. Listen, go. I can tell you're stressed out, and I appreciate your need to handle this quietly. You're also telling me it's urgent, but you're giving me no leads. I'm, he takes a swig of beer. I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm not. I just really need those files back. I need you to find them. And how do you propose I do that? I don't know. Be persuasive. Though he keeps his head straight, he quickly eyes me up and down, thinking I don't notice. Isn't that what you do? No, Gil. That's not what I do. I find people. Or, to be more precise, I look for people. But the thing is, some people just don't want to be found. And for good reason. Just get me in a room with him, Gil says. I can do the rest. No offense, I say, trying, although not very hard, to hold back a chuckle. But you don't strike me as an I'll do the rest kind of guy. What are you going to do? Have Hanson arrested? Nah. If you wanted that, you'd have called the cops already. Gil leans in, sweat rolls down his temple. Mentioning the police is a great equalizer. A client's response can tell you a lot. Promise me, he grits through, he demands through gritted teeth, that what I'm telling you never leaves this table. No police, no way. And there it is. He's scared. He's into something he shouldn't be, something he can't handle, no matter how much he claims otherwise. I assure him with my best Angela Hardwick smile. I'm told I have soothing eyes, more scary, whatever works. It's in the vault. He lets out a breath so long I almost expect his chest to invert. You ever heard of, he's leaning in so close I smell the bratwurst he ate for lunch, the Anshani crew? Now it's my eyes that light up. Seema and Bosco and Shani, they work with their uncle Haji. The Anshanis are small time in the underworld, but they're unhinged in a way others are not, vicious, vindictive. I tangled with them once a few years back, nobody you want in your life. Our client, he says, the one with the missing files, they own a hospitality chain across the realm, Moonglow Suites. They control dozens of smaller companies under the umbrella. I immediately piece it together. It's a classic scam. Let me guess, I say. The Anshanis are consultants of some kind. They hand Moonglow duffel bags of cash. Moonglow launders their money with a clean payment for services rendered, minus a fee. I don't know what Hanson knows, Gill says, answering without answering. And I don't know why he's gone. He doesn't respond to calls, texts, hollow message, or video streams. And his phone is dead. There's no signal. So there's no way to track him. Maybe he's on the run. Maybe he's been kidnapped. Maybe he's dead, I surmise. Gil's hands tremble. I know he downloaded the files. I have to get them back immediately before anyone knows they're gone. Sorry, Gil. This one's not for me. I don't mess with the Anshanis unless I absolutely have to. And let's face it, I don't have to. I can re recommend some other PIs if you want. I stand up, tie the waist straps on my trench coat, then down my scotch. 
I'm meeting the gang to shoot pool. I missed it three months in a row. Not missing it again. Not for this. But you do, Gil says. It has to be you. I turn up my jacket collar, smooth out the rim on my well-worn fedora. Oh, yeah? And why is that? Because, he says, his, as his face betrays him, you're in the file, too. Okay, so as you can see, Hardwick's 10 minutes into this conversation and she's already been sucked into some case with a missing intern, stolen corporate files and gangsters, and she's caught right in the middle of it, whether she wants to be or not. So that's just a flavor of Crackle and Fire, which is on sale now um, on Amazon through Crazy A Press. It's available in ebook and print format. Um, like I said, it's part Doctor Who, part Blade Runner, uh, play, part Philip Marlowe, but in the end, it's all Hardwick. I hope you enjoyed the reading. I may do another one or two, um, but otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and pick up a copy soon. Thanks.